In this video, I'm going to show you the best ways to switch automation modes in Reaper. So I have a project in front of me here with a vocal and two guitars. Let's see what it sounds like now. Something about you isn't right. I swear you can make me lose my mind. Lying here awake at night. If this is love, then I don't want it. So I want to add some volume automation to the vocal. I'm going to go through some of the best ways to do that in this video. We can go to the envelope button on the track and hit it. And that opens up the envelope dialog. We can go up here and choose the automation mode we want to use. But let's start off with a review of the automation modes. Let's start with the right mode. We could choose it and then close this window. And now we could write automation on the vocal track using the fader. Something about you isn't right. I swear you can make me lose my mind. Lying here. Now we could go back to the same place and switch it to read mode and see the automation we just wrote. Something about you is right. And we see it on the fader and also on the envelope. You can make me lose my mind. Lying here awake at night. This is love and I don't want it. And we could also switch it to trim read, which happens to be. Reaper's default. Now we're going to see it on the envelope and hear the result, but we're not going to see it on the fader. Something about you isn't right. I swear you can make me lose my mind. Because in this mode, the fader is just trimming the envelope. So we bring the fader down 3 dB. We're still hearing the fader movements, but the 3 dB lower. Something about you isn't right. I swear you can make me lose my mind. And if we bring the fader 3 dB higher, we're still hearing the envelope and its movements, but the 3 dB louder. Something about you isn't right. I swear you can make me lose my mind. Then we have touch mode. Now in touch mode, the fader is still going to follow the envelope. Something about you isn't right. But it's also going to record any fader movements we make, but only when we're touching the fader. So let's say we just wanted to rewrite this second phrase. Something about you isn't right. We could grab the fader now, and we could write some automation, and then let go so it doesn't affect the third phrase. This is love and so the first phrase is the same. We rewrote the second phrase, and the third phrase is the same. Before and after. And the next mode is latch mode. Now latch mode is exactly the same as touch mode, as it also doesn't start writing until we touch the fader. Except it doesn't stop writing when we let it go. It keeps writing until the end of the song, or until we hit stop. So I'm going to do the same thing and rewrite the second phrase, but notice how it also rewrites the third phrase, even though I'm no longer touching the fader. Something about you isn't right. I'll grab the fader and rewrite the second phrase, let go, and notice it's still writing. This is love and I don't want it. So continue to write even after we let go of the fader. Very useful when you want to punch in your automation, but you don't want to punch out. You want to keep writing. Next, we have latch preview mode. And just like with the last two modes, it will play back automation from the envelope. Something about you isn't right. But if we grab our fader, it's going to go into preview mode. Let's grab it on the second phrase. Something about you isn't right. So now we're in preview mode. 
But notice, nothing was written to the envelope because we're not in a write mode. Preview mode basically bypasses the automation so you can find the perfect level for a section and apply it later. So let's find the perfect level for our second phrase. I swear you can make me lose my mind. I swear you can make me lose my mind. And let's say we're happy with this volume right here. We can create a time selection just for the second phrase. Then we can go to the actions menu Show action list and search in the filter write current. Then we can choose this action right here. Write current values for actively writing envelopes to time selection. Double click it. And now it wrote that value just for the second phrase as volume automation before and after. Then we can switch it back to read mode. And it's going to play back our old automation for the first and third phrase and the new automation for that second phrase. Something about you isn't right. I swear you can make me lose my mind. Life. So those are the automation modes. Now let's talk about the best ways to switch the modes. Besides the envelope button on the track control panel, we also have the same button on the mixer tracks, which opens up the same dialog right here. We could also right click the envelope button and we get a menu where we could choose the modes down at the bottom. But unfortunately, we can't move where these menu options appear. They can only be at the bottom. We can't move them to the top to make them closer or easier to choose. But we can do that with the track control panel menu. So if we right click the track, we could scroll down here to choose the automation modes. But as you can see, that's way down at the bottom in a submenu. But we can customize this menu to put it at the top if we prefer. So let's go back to the actions list and search in the filter menu. Then we could choose to customize our menus right here in this dialog. We'll choose the track control panel context menu to edit. Then we'll scroll down on this side and find the track automation mode section and just drag it to the top right here. Let's also add a separator so it stands out. Hit OK. Now when we right click the track, we can choose our automation modes right at the top. They're still going to be at the bottom as well, but they're a lot quicker to grab when they're right at the top of this menu. We could also switch the modes directly with their actions. So let's go back to the actions list. We'll search in the filter mode and we can find these actions right here. Not the ones up here. These are for all tracks. We want the ones down here, which are just going to work on selected tracks. So if we choose to set the track automation mode to latch, then select the track, hit run, now the track is in latch mode. And we can do the same for latch preview, read, touch, and trim read. And we can add a different keyboard shortcut to each one of these just by hitting the add button and typing in the keyboard shortcut we want to use. So we can set up a different one for latch, preview, read, touch, and so on. There's also a very useful one down here that will toggle between, between touch and trim read mode using just one keyboard shortcut, assuming you'll be using these two modes the most. So we could hit it to go to touch mode, hit it again for trim read, back to touch, and back to trim read. And we can add a keyboard shortcut to it right here. But my preferred way of switching the automation modes would be to create a custom toolbar to trigger all of these actions. So let's do that. Let's go up here and right click and choose Open Toolbar. And just pick a toolbar we're not using. I'm going to choose Toolbar 2, which looks like this. We'll hit the Edit Me button. Then we can remove that button. And let's rename this toolbar 
automation. Then we could add all those actions, just select them all, hit select and close. Now they show up right here. We could put them in our preferred order and they're gonna look like this. But we can give them a custom toolbar button by right clicking each of them and choosing the buttons that go with each. As Reaper includes custom buttons that go with each mode. And now they'll look like this. Hit OK, and they show up like this in the toolbar. So now we could just select our tracks and choose any automation mode we want. If you want to write some automation on this track, hit the right button and just write it with our fader. Something about you isn't right. We could switch to touch mode. Something about you isn't right. Or latch or preview. Something about you isn't right. Or switch it to read. Something about you isn't right. Or trim read if we want to trim our envelope. So we can quickly switch to any automation mode we want. But we should also put a keyboard shortcut to open and close this toolbar whenever we need it. So let's go back to the actions list, search toolbar, and find the actions down here to open and close our toolbars. We'll choose toolbar number two and add a keyboard shortcut to this. So now if we want to write some automation, we could just select our track, hit that keyboard shortcut, and choose the automation mode we want to use. And we're done with it, we can just hide it with the same keyboard shortcut. Want to write more automation? Hit it again. And we're ready to change our automation modes again. So that's pretty much it. That's the best ways to switch automation modes in Reaper. Hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.